uh, today I'm going to be going over uh, a couple of techniques uh, that we do when our opponent has us in his control. In other words, he has us immobilized or pinned or limits our capabilities. Uh, so the title of this video is called Out of Control, and we're going to try and get control back. Uh, from him. So uh, I'm going to go over several different control positions uh, that I demonstrated in the last two videos, uh, but this time they're going to be uh, used against me and we're going to get control back. Actually, in our last video, I did touch upon um, a, uh, a counter position against a clinch, and that would be an example of when my opponent has me in his control and how to get out of that. Uh, I will go over that again in this video as well as some of the other positions you saw in the last two videos. So one of the control positions uh, you saw me do uh, against my opponent was to pin his arm or try and pin his arm against his body. Uh, we called that control position three. Uh, it's just midline between uh, the, the forearm uh, or the mid part of the arm. But now my, uh, my opponent has me in that position, so I'm going to go over several counters uh, that you can do, keeping in mind that you do want to have your other hand uh, available to either attack or defend, even uh, while you're trying to get out of this control. So the first one I demonstrate, or I will demonstrate, is a rolling technique, where I'm just going to use the pressure he's applying against my arm, against him, and just retake control position uh, from him. Okay, so I do that by just putting pressure back against the arm so it doesn't collapse into me and then I hinge or roll on top and I'll keep my other hand up uh, again uh, to uh, defend against any attack that he uh, gives me okay so that is called the roll right like that uh, another um, technique or counter technique you can do against this control position would be to try and get from under the arm and just pull it up so actually, I'm switching the control against him. I'm, I'm taking his control, and I'm turning it into my control. And I do that by just turning my arm sideways or upright. And then I'll move out of the way, and I'll lift his arm up. And that's control position four, if you saw our other videos. Okay. So again, I have, uh, he has my arm pinned, and I want to get out of it. And that's how I do it, or one of the ways I can do it. Uh, another way I get out of this, and, and I love this one, is where I'm going to just elbow or strike uh, the top side of his hand where he's trying to pin me, try and encourage him to just take that off on his own, and then I can come around and strike with that hand. And even if he doesn't take it off on his own, it will definitely give me an opportunity to pull it off. Uh, because it's definitely uh, not going to be the same amount of pressure he had before I hit him. My opponent now has uh, my arm uh, on the inside of my arm, uh, and he's considered to have superior position because he has uh, an inside line uh, to my face. Uh, so uh, this is not good. I want to not stay in this position. And if uh, I can, what I want to try and do is pull this arm down and then strike back. Or I can even do it as I'm pulling the arm down and uh, double it up. Um, so uh, this is a jerking technique. I would actually be jerking them all the way down uh, to my hip. Okay, so this will be the jerking technique, and I just come right back. Okay, so that will be one way, pulling him down from this control position. Uh, another way would be to go on top of it and get him to be on the outside. So I'm going to dive or dig down and I'll throw some strikes or defend myself and then throw some strikes. I always want to uh, uh, keep that in mind that, that I don't want to focus entirely on uh, regaining control, but I also want to put him on the defense. So this is another technique where I go over the arm, okay? And then I can actually just retake the same control position from him by going around. And now I have him on uh, the outside, and I have control position on the inside. Uh, again, consider superior positioning. So uh, what I did is I just rotated my arm around, and I was able to get it on the inside. Okay, And again, just add a block or two in there, a strike or two in there, and it will just flow. 
I'm going to represent a position of control where my opponent has uh, my shoulder or he's putting pressure on my shoulder, uh, trying to control my core. Uh, so uh, what I'll do is I'll just remove one of the arms uh, so I can place it more efficiently on my shoulder. If you see, this is on my shoulder right here, and I don't want it to be there. I want to get it off my shoulder. So uh, what I'm going to do in this circumstance is try and lift it above my shoulder so it rests on my neck and now I have him in a position where I can uh, actually wrench that arm and either lift it off or slap it off uh, once it gets on my, sh on my above my shoulder so right now it's on my shoulder and I want to get it above my shoulder uh, this is considered better positioning I just took myself out of his control and put him under my control and to get out of it completely I'll wrench the arm and I'll just lift it off my shoulder while I move out I took the other arm out of uh, the upper arm out of the wooden dummy uh, to show you how I'm going to practice a control position my opponent might give me against uh, uh, my lower half of my core or on my hip. Uh, and what I'm going to do to represent that is just pull uh, the wooden dummy forward and just rest uh, the lower arm onto my hip. Um, as long as there's no weight in, in your freestanding wooden dummy, uh, you should be able to do that pretty easily. And now what I like to do, uh, um, to demonstrate uh, to get out of this control position or at least alleviate the pressure from this control position would be to lift up this uh, arm off my hip at the same time I move my hip away and then reposition my leg in front and now I can wrap my arm around his arm and go for a wrench or an arm break okay I'll demonstrate that again okay so you just want to just bring the wooden dummy here so the lower arm rests against your hip okay and then you want to lift that up move your leg out reposition your leg and lock it in for the arm break so far we covered how to get out of control positions that were done on the outside of uh, my arm, on the inside of my arm, on my shoulders, and on my hips. Uh, I showed in the last video uh, briefly uh, what if my opponent had me around the neck, okay, or in a clinch. Okay, so I'm just going to put my, my head in between uh, the two arms of the wooden dummy to make that representation. The safest position I can do from here is to to put uh, one arm completely over and put it against his shoulder and the other one would be going against his hip this is going to help stop him from pulling me in okay and it also help me defend against any knees and this would help me defend against any elbows this is a very secure position if he's overpowering me I can come up to here and this is called a bridge and I would just push out and away okay so this is how I'm going to uh, even out the control position scoreboard so to speak but now I want to get out of this control so what I'm going to do when an opportunity uh, presents itself is similar to what I did uh, when he was on my shoulder I'm going to and get one of his arms it's already around my neck I'm just gonna try and get it straight so that I can wrench it and then slap it off at the same time I slapped the kidney and I just did a couple of follow-ups um, to make sure he doesn't put me back under his control so uh, again to represent that and if you want to get even uh, closer you can again um, don't be uh, afraid to just take out the middle middle arm and then you're right in between here and you can see I'm getting him right around my arm let me go on this side so you can see it better uh, his arms are around my neck and I have the control position that I'm looking for okay his arm is still not coming off my neck so what I'm gonna do is just make sure I can straighten it out or at least this one and then once this becomes straight and I wrench this one usually starts to lose its uh, grip and now I'm going to slap it off at the same time I slap the kidney and just do a couple of follow-ups
I can keep talking about controls and make more videos on controls. The controls are a big part of uh, Jeet Kune Do in fighting. Uh, but this series is more about the wooden dummy and how we can uh, practice our techniques on the wooden dummy. Uh, so uh, we're going to move along in the series and we're going to talk about other things uh, that I teach in uh, Jeet Kune Do and Kali and how we can use the wooden dummy uh, to help us practice those. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll get another video out there soon.